This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, the Kennebec County Grand Jury has indicted a man on attempted murder charges in connection with a shooting incident in Waterville. 29-year-old Morris Watkins Cundiff was arrested in April after police received several complaints of shots being fired around Pleasant Street. Police say Watkins Cundiff allegedly fired multiple rounds at another person during a domestic dispute when that person tried to leave in a vehicle. According to police, Watkins Cundiff attempted to chase the person, but police intervened. He was also indicted on several other charges, including reckless conduct with a dangerous weapon, domestic violence assault, and criminal OUI. Two people arrested on drug charges stemming from a shooting in Randolph were also indicted by the grand jury. 35-year-old Eric Cooper and 40-year-old Meredith Prue were indicted on multiple charges, including aggravated drug trafficking and violation of conditions of release. One person was injured in the shooting that happened on Belmont Avenue in April, which police say was accidental. The victim suffered non-life-threatening injuries. The Maine Attorney General's office has determined the shooting death of a Lewiston man was in self-defense. That shooting took place just before 11 a.m. on May 20th at the Ready Road Service Towing Company on the Riverside Road in Augusta. 36-year-old Tyler Morin died as a result of his injuries. A spokesperson says after reviewing all the investigative reports, the Attorney, the attorney General's office determined 48-year-old Rob Drummond of Augusta acted in self-defense when he shot Morin. No criminal charges will be filed. Well, the Maine Department of Corrections has confirmed another death at the Maine Correctional Center. According to the MDOC, at approximately 1.30 Thursday morning, 21-year-old Alexander Lewis of Wilton passed away. The Attorney General's Office and Medical Examiner have been notified. In June of this year, Lewis was sentenced to the Maine Department of Corrections for two years for multiple offenses. And Senator Angus a historic investment for broadband in Maine this Thursday morning, and our Matthew Jaroncic has more. Senator Angus King and White House American Rescue Plan Coordinator Gene Sperling announced the approval of a $110 million investment in Maine's broadband infrastructure during a virtual press conference Thursday. The investment is coming from the American Rescue Plan's capital fund, which is negotiated by Senator King. King was joined by U.S. Treasury Chief Recovery Officer Jacob Liebenluff, as well as Senators Amy Klobuchar and Chris Van Hollen and others. The group talked about the plan and how it will benefit the nation as well as the state of Maine. What we're talking about now is supporting bringing all of America, all of America into the 21st century economy, enabling seniors to connect with their health care providers by telehealth, enabling students uh, to connect with their schools, to do their homework. Funding from the plan will go to Maine Infrastructure Ready, a program that provides 22,000 Mainers with high-speed and reliable internet across the state. Senator King says he's been advocating for this type of investment for the past 10 years. We have schools in rural Maine, I was just make, meeting with the superintendent yesterday, where there's no connection to the home, so the kids go to the school where we do have a connection, sit out next to the school and do their homework at 9 o'clock at night because they're, they're uh, getting in onto the network that's available at the school building. Besides Maine, three other states are included in the plan. Senator King says the funding will help make Maine a better place to live and work. But providing broadband to the small towns in rural America, which this initiative is going to do, will enable people to expand their economic opportunities and still stay in the communities where they grew up, where they love, where they want to live. And that's really, I think, at the heart of this. Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7, Fox 22. Meanwhile, the city of Ellsworth approved the budget for the upcoming school year. And since the school budget was not included in the special election, the city of Ellsworth held a special municipal vote Tuesday. City clerk Tony Dyer says a total of 680 ballots were cast. Of those, 547 voted in favor of the $25 million spending plan for the Ellsworth schools, while 132 voted against it. Passing this budget allows them to continue to operate you know, the kids need to go to school and have enough teachers to teach them. They need to go to school and have the books and supplies that they need. 
to do well, as well as food. You know, our schools now are providing many kids, some of the, some of the kids, that's the only meals that they're getting is from our school department. So this is huge for the kids in the Ellsworth school system. The city council will finalize the school budget in their next meeting on Monday, July 18th. Well, if you're part of the Ellsworth community and you love to read, you may be disappointed about the recent changes at the Ellsworth Public Library. As Sierra Jordan reports, a recent, a recent budget cut is already having an impact on that community. I read every day. <laughs> Amy Barnes has been visiting the Ellsworth Public Library since she was eight years old. Now she's one of the librarians there. Barnes was disappointed when she heard the news that their services and hours will be cut. It needs to be funded. It's a place that just is communities where everybody can come. People think of a library and they think of books. They just think of books, but we do so much more than books. Ellsworth Public Library Interim Director Charlene Clemens says they submitted a budget of $539,000 to the City Council, but that was denied. I feel like sitting in a car and crying. <laughs> the Ellsworth Public Library took a $39,000 budget cut to the 2023 fiscal year. Clemens said things won't be the same anymore. They're cutting back on programs and even closing the building on Sundays and Mondays. We have cut electronic services, our electronic books. Uh, we had Hoopla, which was a wonderful service with electronic books. Uh, audiobooks, movies, cut postage, so our in the library loan program, we have a van delivery service in the state. We have cut two days out of that delivery, so it's going to take longer for our in the library loans to arrive. In response to the budget cut, the community came together in solidarity by creating a Facebook page called Support Ellsworth Public Library. Longtime employees say the library is a keystone of the community. I think it's a very important place for people to come, not just to utilize the library for what libraries are used for, but just to gather and to be social and to uh, just have a, a home away from home. In Ellsworth, I'm Sierra Jordan reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22. And you can visit the Facebook page, Support Ellsworth Public Library, again, if you'd like to get involved there. Alrighty, well, it's about that time. We mm -hmm. should take a check outside. We've certainly been hearing some serious rain coming down yeah. outside our studio. So let's get a first check at the forecast and see what we can expect in the coming hours. All right, Beth and Peter, happy Thursday. Your first weather is brought to you by Saliba's Rug Cleaners, Maine's largest for over 70 years. And okay, temperature-wise, look what we did. 85 here today, 77, though, on coastal areas. And tomorrow, same story. We're going to keep the heat around now for a couple more days. The winds are all over the place today. Uh, the north, south, east, west will take it, but they will likely switch out of the west tomorrow as all of this will get out of here tonight. And we are in a drying out trend for several days uh, after tonight. In fact, tomorrow's dry into the weekend's dry. Our next chance for rain probably not until Monday of next week after tonight. So our forecast then tonight, though, is decreasing clouds and very comfortable out there with low temperatures. Temperatures down near 60. Your full forecast is coming up. Beth and Peter. So the heat is sticking around. Yep, and some relief on the way, at least uh, with all that rain, too. Yep, well, coming up on ABC 7 News at 6 today, the Woodlawn Museum and Gardens is breaking ground on a new community barn. And St. Joseph's Hospital celebrates its 75th anniversary. We'll have those stories and much more after this. I work long hours to provide for my family, but with runaway inflation, it's getting harder to make ends meet. Instead of lowering costs for families, Washington liberals are attacking America's tech innovators. That's the wrong agenda at the wrong time. The left's bill will destroy jobs, make China stronger, and America weaker. Working people like me will pay the price. No Republican senator should support this liberal agenda. Tell Senate conservatives to reject the left's bill. Phenomenal demand. The Backstreet Boys are back. The record-breaking DNA World Tour continues. Brian, Kevin, Howie, Nick, and AJ. Backstreet Boys. Main Savings Amphitheater, July 21st. Get tickets now at waterfrontconcerts.com or ticketmaster.com. For more, check backstreetboys.com.
Established in 1925, Bangle Floral has been a premier provider of beautiful floral arrangements and thoughtful gifts for almost 100 years. Whatever the occasion, our premium collection of colorful blooms, blossoming plants, and gift baskets have warmed hearts for generations. We strongly support the Buy Local movement, purchasing directly from local farms and growers, and we are committed to the preservation of our environment. Bangle Floral, located at 332 Harlow Street, Stop in today to experience a flower shop like no other. Winter Harbor Lobster Co-op is a small group of independent Maine fishermen who want to make sure you get the freshest lobsters we can provide. To do that, we sell direct to the public to avoid long storage times and inflated prices. For the best quality, texture, and taste, our live lobsters have to have ideal conditions from the time we catch them to when they arrive at your table. Please browse our website for fantastic deals on real, fresh Maine lobster and other seafood. Winter Harbor Lobster Co-op, from our boats to your door. There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. Well, St. Joseph's Hospital is celebrating its 75th anniversary by hosting a series of events. Our A.J. Douglas joined the reflection and prayer ceremony and heard from employees about what makes the community hospital so special. St. Joseph Healthcare employees recently unearthed a 15-year-old time capsule while celebrating 75 years of serving the Bangor community. The hospital is currently planning to bury a new capsule, but first, healthcare professionals who contributed to the very beginning of St. Joseph's legacy shared stories and laughs. Uh, they really laid down the mission and the quality of this organization. And I think their intent was they wanted to lay those seeds in the lay people uh, who are in this organization to carry on that mission of quality. President Mary Privolo says St. Joe's is steadily changing to adapt to community members' needs. Our community is struggling with substance use disorder, uh, homelessness, human trafficking. So St. Joe's functions as a convener. So working with other agencies in the community, we have worked to form the Community Health Leadership Board that has been working for years to work on treatment and prevention of substance use disorder. As this health care facility celebrates the Mindstone, staff are focused on continuing to promote wellness for years to come. Well, my hopes for the future is that we continue to serve this community. My ultimate dream would be that we don't have substance use disorder to the extent that we do now, um, that we don't have the number of vulnerable populations, but if we do, that we have good networks and uh, prevention models in place to be able to care for those individuals. The new capsule is set to be buried later this fall in Bangor, AJ Douglas, ABC 7, Fox 22. All right, and still to come on ABC 7 News at 6, blueberry lovers have a field day thanks to the UMaine Cooperative Extension. And in sports, hear from Cooper Flagg as he breaks down his experience winning the gold medal with Team USA. That story right after the break. The best value for your money is always at the Furniture Gallery. And now, during our Summer Sizzler Sale, take home this Ashley recliner for only $2.99 and take an additional 10% off all other recliners. The Furniture Gallery's Camp and Cottage Queen Foam or Inner Spring Mattresses start at only $2.99. Big Time Inflation Buster Sofa and Love Seat for an incredible low price of $9.99. Special financing is available only at the Furniture Gallery in Augusta, Bangor, Gorham, North Windham, and now open in Newport. Hey! You wanna sing a little bit? Keith Urban, the Speed of Now World Tour. The Must See Show of 2022. Saturday, July 23rd in Maine Saving Amphitheater. With special guest Ingrid Andrus. Tickets on sale now at waterfrontconcerts.com or ticketmaster.com. Keith Urban. The Speed of Now World Tour. Gas and heating oil prices are the highest ever. Why? Because Joe Biden and the liberals in Congress took a hard left turn and dragged Jared Golden with them. Biden and Golden turned off more American energy production, stopping pipelines and exploration, looking to buy from our enemies. They are going the wrong way. Mainers need relief, not empty promises. Tell Jared Golden to help open American energy production and lower the price of gas. This week on... 
It's a party every night. <laughs> and our players can barely contain their excitement. All right, no more caffeine for Chris. Okay. No Plus, how well do you know America's game? Here's a quiz for you folks at home. Pat reveals a real secret. This will surprise you. That leaves <laughs> Vanna saying... Really? Really, I swear to you. This week on Wheel of Fortune. It looks like you're going to have fun tonight. Yay. Weekdays at 7 on ABC7. This week on Jeopardy, Mark the Veterinarian is ready for wildlife categories. I got to work on cheetahs, bobcats, Burmese pythons, uh, red-tailed hawk. Wow. But we have a summer blockbuster instead. Characters in the movie. The first in a series had Morpheus, Trinity, and Agent Smith. And a little fun with numbers. Four, 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 four. See what all the fours <laughs> are for. Looks like a perfect formula for another great game. This week on Jeopardy. All this week at 7.30, only on ABC7. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Engstrom's Auto Service in Guilford. We specialize in all foreign and domestic service and alignments. Welcome back, everyone. Well, on Wednesday, we heard from the Newport faithful as they welcomed Cooper Flag back to Maine. Now, hear from the man himself as Tyler Cruz caught up with the gold medalist after his trip to Spain. What do we have here? Take off! I don't know. I think some of the stuff still hasn't really hit me. Wednesday night, the pride of Newport received a hero's welcome, coming back to Maine after dominating overseas, wearing the red, white, and blue. Oh, baby! Cooper Allies! You know, it's kind of surreal um, just putting the jersey on that says USA and being able to represent the whole country. And seeing USA across his chest is just, like, it's a feeling I... I, I can't even describe. Besides winning the gold medal, it was the reactions from all of the Spain fans after watching their home team lose that sticks with Cooper the most. Probably after the game when um, parents and fans were swearing and yelling and booing. That's probably my favorite part. So Cooper, did you learn any Spanish out there? A little bit. A um, couple of trash words, a couple of trash talk words, but you know, we, we don't need to bring those up. What we do need to bring up are the numbers. During his run at the gold medal, Cooper was top five in the World Cup in rebounds, blocks, and steals, earning himself a spot on the tournament's All-Star Five. I think that's always how um, even my parents have raised me, just not worry about yourself as much as just worry about getting the win. So um, that's how I've always been, how I was raised, and just, just looking forward to doing whatever I can to help the team win. I've always known how talented he is and how hard he worked, but I never really also expected um, you know, him to go and, and play for Team USA and win a gold medal like that was pretty incredible. It's the dedication to his craft that's brought Cooper a gold ball and a gold medal in the span of just a few months. It means a lot just being a result of all the hard work that I've put in, so um, just it motivates me knowing that I'm on the right path and that I just need to keep going. For Flag, his path is far from over. He's on to the next adventure. Traveling south for the Nike EYBL's Peach Jam Tournament this weekend. But wherever he goes, that same humble demeanor follows him. And I kind of just go day by day and just not really think about it. And uh, just, um, just focus on working on the next thing that's coming and just work on myself. Reporting from Newport, I'm Tyler Cruz, ABC7, Fox 22 Sports. All right, thank you, Tyler. What a great atmosphere there, but it's not like he comes back at the parade and then sits back because he's already headed south for the uh, Peach Jam tournament with the Nike Elite U Youth League, so he'll have that. And then in a couple of weeks, he'll head south finally to Florida to join Montverde along with his brother Ace. We'll have coverage of that for now, though. Let's head to the main AM for the final round of action. Caleb Manuel beginning the day with a two-shot lead over Mike Arsenal Jr. Back to Webhannock Golf Club we go. Let's pick up the action on 12 here. Caleb trailing by two shots, but he knocks down a birdie putt here. Arsenal would bogey the hole, so the two golfers were tied at three under here. Then on 13, Caleb makes it back to back birdies. His putter was on fire to go four under and take a one shot lead to 14 now. And Caleb with the hat trick. I told you it was on fire. Three straight birdies to go to five under with four holes to go. Mike Arsenal Jr. out of Valhalla with a beautiful chip here, putting the pressure on on 15. It almost goes in. He would settle for par and finish at two under. Caleb with a comfortable lead, though, drains a long birdie putt here on 18 to finish out in style. His seventh bird of the day, he'd submit a minus six to capture his second straight main amateur championship. 
the two shot swing, making a 15 footer on 12, and then him making bogey. That that was that was kind of the moment where I was like, all right, game on. And uh, that's when I got new life. This year, my dad was like, this is going to be the best lag putt of your life. And I'm like, dad, let's roll this one in. So I, I made that, and that was pretty special. And I didn't think it was in the whole way, but I knew I had a chance. And uh, to birdie the last, it's always good. So congratulations to Caleb. Nice job out there delivering while the pressure was on. Meanwhile, down in Boston, the ties between the Bruins and the Black Bears just keeps getting stronger. The Bruins have acquired former Maine defenseman Dan Renouf from the Detroit Red Wings, according to Andy Strickland of Bali Sports. The deal is a reported two-year, two-way contract between Boston and Providence. Renouf, who left Maine back in 2016, played just four games with the Red Wings this past season, spending most of his time in the AHL with the Grand Rapids Griffins. Renouf will likely join Edwards Trailmax and J.D. Greenway as former Black Bears, currently with the Providence Bruins. All right, and that's sports. Here's Jeff Weller with your full five-day forecast. Jeff? All right, Dave, thank you. Your full weather is brought to you by Tony Murray's Fairway Auto Sales in Hancock. Stop in and see Tony and Nicole. Every vehicle comes with a complimentary six-month, 6,000-mile major component coverage plan. Come buy your vehicle the Fairway. It's more than just a tagline. It's also the way they do business. And for us, okay, we are in summer mode around here, 80s, mid-80s out there today, and they're going to stick around through the weekend. Who is ready for a hot weekend? Lots of hands going up. There are warmer temperatures on the way. But today, look what we did, 85 here in Bangor, 77 Bar Harbor, also Millinocket, a very nice day across the area temperature-wise, but we also had some showers and storms, and they're just kind of finishing up with us right now. And the winds are all over the place today, really kind of gusty at times, out of the north, south, east, and west. They will switch out of the southwest tomorrow morning, and that's pretty much to stay with us through the weekend and beyond. Okay, it's going to get a little windy too, especially tomorrow afternoon and also into Saturday. We could see a southwest wind gust near 25. That will definitely blow your hammocks around, of course, with wind gusts near that. Okay, it's also going to blow the allergens around. So right now, tree pollen is back in the moderate category. Grass and weed looking okay. The real high one, though, is still the mold. It's in the high to very high category currently. It'll likely stay there for a few more days, at least around here. Uh, but here's the drought monitor. All right, so this came out again today. A new one comes out every Thursday. And, of course, the west, right? Decades of drought there. But for us... The area that could use some rainfall is expanding across our region, pretty much taking into effect all of us now. And this is not a widespread drought, but just know this is level one, that's level two. We could use some rain. Your garden's thirsty, and there's not a lot of rain in the forecast after today. We'll have to wait probably till Monday into Tuesday of next week. And there is rain out there now. This will help, of course, right, with the showers and storms out there now. But they're basically pushing off to the east currently, and behind it, there's not much going on. So we're going to get through these tonight and then be done for several days around here as the front is right through there. That's going this way. Behind it, these will all fall apart over here. And we are in a drying out trend overnight tonight. And there's just nothing over here to mess with us anytime soon. High pressure is going to build in for the weekend. Kind of a hazy, warm, humid weekend on the way with temperatures back in the 80s before we do get some rain showers back in here, most likely on Monday. So going forward, rainfall wise, tonight still some rain to get through. And then we're done for a couple days, most likely until Sunday and Monday. Our forecast end tonight, though, is storms out there now. Will be ending shortly. Look for low temperatures down near a muggy 60. There could be some dense fog again after midnight tonight. For tomorrow, okay, morning fog followed by lots of afternoon sunshine. Highs back up in the 80s. Beautiful Friday, right? With a northwest breeze around 5 to 15. And then looking ahead, your five day forecast by Tony Murray's Fairway Auto Sales shows the story. 82 tomorrow, Saturday, 84, 88 and sunny on Sunday before we get some more thunder showers in here on Monday. All right. All right. It's interesting to see that map uh, as well and see just how much of the state really could use that extra soaking of, of rain out there right now. Yeah, you know, we all enjoy the summer heat. Uh, some more than others, but certainly mm. the sunny, warm temperatures are what you expect this time of year. Yeah. But you have to remember that those dry conditions can really be problematic, especially mm. you know when, around the 4th of July, we have people tossing fireworks around and all right. the things. So right. it's, it is important to get a good soaking yes. about this time as well. No, absolutely. All yeah. right. Well, there is still more to come after the break. Stay with us. Did 
Did you make that call? Honey, we already have Medicare. Why do I need to call? Alan, the Feldman said we may be able to get additional benefits with a Medicare Advantage plan right here in our zip code with zero dollar monthly premiums. Honey, what do you mean additional benefits? We turned 65, we got Medicare. That's all there is to it, right? I'm talking about Medicare Part C, commonly called Medicare Advantage. We have traditional Medicare, which is only Medicare Parts A and B, but not Part C. Wait. So not everyone on Medicare is a Part C plan? No. That's why we need to call, because there may be plans available with additional benefits that aren't covered under Medicare Parts A and B. We don't have a Medicare Part C plan which covers everything in Part A and Part B, plus extra benefits in Medicare Part C. What kind of extra benefits? There are great plans that may be available with extra benefits, like dental, vision, and hearing. Did you say dental? Yes, dental. Medicare Part C plans could include dental benefits that help cover routine dental exams and teeth cleanings, plus dental x-rays, fillings, gum disease treatment, and dentures. We need that. I'm calling. If you don't have a Medicare Part C plan, call now because there may be plans with additional benefits available that are simply not covered under Medicare Parts A and B, like routine dental coverage. If you're on Medicare, you can call even if you called last year. We will check to see if there is a Part C plan available in your area with additional benefits. You don't get a plan with additional benefits automatically. If you're losing coverage, moving, or new to Medicare, call to speak with a licensed insurance agent. Remember, you don't get Medicare Part C benefits automatically. Call now for your free 2022 no obligation Medicare benefits review. Call 800 413 8094. 800 413 8094. Welcome to the Purple Baboon, a local gem on the Belfast waterfront. Find lots of little joys for every taste, like fun clothing for the whole family and a lovely selection of coastal Maine made jewelry. The Purple Baboon, the best selection at great prices, 31 Front Street, Belfast. Tonight, Price hikes, the highest in over 40 years. So when will they come down? Plus, President Biden's trip and first stop in Israel. More Americans turn to World News Tonight with David Muir, the most watched program on all of television. Well, the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife will be accepting antlerless deer permit lottery applications online only until August 1st, though, at 11.59 p.m. Now, there is no fee to enter the lottery, but there is a $14 fee if a hunter is chosen in the lottery. Applicants must have a current valid Maine big game hunting license unless hunting on their own land. Winners will be notified by the IFW website on September 1st and then emailed shortly thereafter with instructions on claiming your permit. Now to apply, head to the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife website. Information and the application can be found under the hunting and trapping section. Well, finally tonight, the University of Maine Cooperative Extension held its annual Wild Blueberry Field Day today. Here's Dylan Holloway with all the juicy details. University of Maine researchers, farmers, company vendors, and blueberry fanatics gathered in Jonesboro on Thursday for the UMaine Cooperative Extension's Wild Blueberry Field Day. Wild Blueberry specialist Lily Calderwood says the day is a great chance for blueberry enthusiasts to learn new things, communicate with each other, and catch up. But we have a great turnout today. I'm happy to see um, farmers from Midcoast made the trip all the way out here. And the Down East folks have also driven, you know, Washington County is a big place. So um, it's great to have the two groups meet and they learn a lot from each other. And we also have a lot of the processors here and uh, other stakeholders in the industry. Ed Hennessy has been blueberry farming since 1975, but says he still attends the annual field day to review techniques and meet the next generation of farmers. I was very surprised to see so many younger farmers here today. That's really good for the farming industry. Calderwood says the blueberry industry is huge in the state of Maine, and it's important to hold events like Wild Blueberry Field Day. She says there are around 40,000 acres of blueberries in the state, which are managed by just under 500 growers. Our farmers are incredibly hardworking and thoughtful people, and they really think about all the management that they do, uh, you know, regarding bees, regarding soil health. So they, they are here with really good intentions, and um, hopefully people appreciate that. 
Several topics were covered throughout the day, such as integrated pest management, crop management, drought management, and adaption to climate change. When I asked Lily, Ed, and others how the day went, they all seemed to respond pretty much the same way. It couldn't have been any sweeter. Reporting from Jonesboro, I'm Dylan Holloway for ABC7 and Fox 22. Very cool. Very yeah. sweet, I could yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know, I have to say, just that shot of sort of going through the blueberry field, it's actually just a beautiful plant to look at yeah. in general, let alone how delicious Maine blueberries are. Yeah. So it's great to see there's so much attention paid to cultivating that. Indeed it is. All right, well, that's it for tonight. Thanks so much for joining us.